Let us pray. I God in heaven, we thank you for bringing us to the Bible study today. We thank you for the privilege you give us which many people in this country and even in the world which they do not have. We thank you for the deep revelations and teachings and instructions of your word you are revealing to us every time we come for the Bible study. We thank you for the privilege of sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ to learn the deep words of the Lord. We thank you for the privilege of sitting at the in Jesus name. We thank you for the privilege of sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ to learn the deep words of the Lord. And we pray that as the teachers, you will lead us to receive the grace whereby we will be obedient unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. We welcome everyone to the Bible study of today once again in Jesus' name. The series we're studying at this time is a very important series. There are many people, even churchgoers, even those who are Christians, who do not understand the teachings preserved for us in the book of Genesis. And the privilege has become ours that we will study this book of Genesis in such an interesting, in such a deep way. Today we are studying the latter part of chapter 4 and we are also studying the major parts of chapter 5. This passage of study gives us the details of the effects of Adam's sin. These passages are usually omitted by casual readers of the Bible. They think there is not much to learn from them. But we believe that no part of God's word is useless or unprofitable. Anything God preserves in his word, there is a purpose. And if we discover that purpose, we will learn the lesson from it. That is why we cannot neglect, we cannot overlook any part of the word of God. We must remember that all scripture is profitable for instruction. As every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, so no part of scripture is to be refused or cast away as unprofitable. The latter part of Genesis chapter 4, which we are going to look at today, traces the godless line of Cain down to the seventh generation from Adam. And we are going to look at today, traces the godless line of Cain down to the seventh generation from Adam. 
alai wa bi olorun ti kani titi o fi de ran keje lati ori adamu and then closes with the account of the birth of seth o wa pari gbogbo re pelu akosile ibi seti chapter 5 traces the generations of adam giving us some names of the fallen descendants of that first man ori karun ti o je ori ti an tun ko nipa re loni baka na to pase iran adamu o si fun wa ni oruko awon kan ninu awon eni subu lati ran deran in today's study we shall consider three points ninu eko to ni o meta ni afe gbeye wo number 1 descendants of cain akoko awon iran kaini number 2 generations and likeness of adam ekeji awon iran ati irisi adamu number 3 death universal for all of adam's descendants iketa iku kari aye fun iran adamu Number one, descendants of Cain. Ekini awa irakaini. We studied about Cain last week. Akoni pa kaini ni oseti okoja. We saw that his sacrifice was not acceptable before the law. Aripe eboti oru kosete wakban wadi oluwa. And the reason it wasn't acceptable in the sight of God is that it was a bloodless sacrifice. It did tiko visete wakba lo wo oluwa ni pe ebona je il tiko niye jeni no. The Bible says without the shedding of blood is no remission, no removal of sin. Bi be li si so wi pe la e si ita jesi le ko si mo kuru e she. Also the reason it was rejected is that it was out of the fruit of the cursed ground. It di mi ran ti a fi ko e bo re ni pe o je iso lati ile ti a ti fi gegun. And we are told that by the deeds of the Lord, the works of man hand shall no man be justified in the sight of God. As so fun wai pe ni pa e se o fin ta bi se o we ni ya ko se enti a o dala re ni waju o loron. God corrected him, God rebuked him and God told him that if he will still do well, that the sin offering was available and it will still be acceptable to God. O loron ba wi, o loron si si ton ni re pe, ti o ba si tun le se re re. But he refused correction. So He was full of wrath. He was full of anger and he was full of malice against his brother Abel. There was jealousy and envy in his heart against Abel. Eventually he he killed Abel his brother. Nigbo se o pa Abeli ara kunrin re. And when God came to ask him where is Abel thy brother, he told a lie. He said am I my brother's keeper? Nigba ti Olorun si to wa to wa bere Abeli aburo re lowo re. O tu paro o ni se mi je olutoju ara kunrin mi. And then a curse came upon him. Nitori eyi egun o wa wa sori re. The wrath of God, the judgment of God came upon him. I dajo Olorun ibinu Olorun o wa sori re. There is judgment coming upon every sinner that sins and refuses to repent. And then he became a vagabond and a fugitive. Now what step did Cain take after he was rejected of God. Genesis chapter 4 from verse 16. Genesis And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Here we find the record of a man whom God had forsaken. He went out from the presence of God and never returned to repent with an acceptable sacrifice or atonement for sin. Here he is an example of a God forsaking life. He went out alone. He went out in silence. Without uttering one word of repentance. He went 
out from the Lord to an unknown, untrodden land. O jade kuro ni waji oluwa si le ti eni keni kuma ti eni keni kirin. He went out withered and a curse, bearing the mark of the curse, and then he was a banished criminal. O jade lo gaga bi Allah re ati eni fibu. He went out to the land with no divine presence. He went out to the land where there was no glory of God. Look at that Genesis chapter 4 verse 16 again. He went out out from the presence of the Lord. This is a terrible thing that happens to the people that become apostates. These are people not just that they are backsliding, but they have gone beyond ordinary backsliding and their doom has been sealed before the Lord. See, God is a merciful God. If somebody backslides but is weeping and crying and pleading and praying, God will receive him. If somebody has backslidden and is holding on to Jesus, saying, Jesus, don't leave me. I'm sorry for my sin. I, I know it's my weakness. I know I'm guilty. Forgive me. God is a merciful God. God will forgive. If a person has fallen into sin and is crying, saying, where will I go? If I'm away from the presence of God, if I'm away from the fold, from the flock of God, from the family of God, where will I spend eternity? And he's praying, saying, oh God, I will not even do anything. Except to receive me, God will receive such an individual. But when somebody has backsliding and becomes adamant and he throws away his Bible, he rejects the people of God. He doesn't want to pray. He says, I don't care what will happen. And he goes away from the presence of God without a word of repentance. What hope does that person have? In Psalm 68 verse 2. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melted before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. In Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 39. Verse 39. Therefore behold I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you, and the city that I gave you and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence. Nitori na sawo, emi o gbagbe yin pata pata, emi o si konye sile, emi o si tinye jade, ati iluti mo fun yin, ati fun a wamba ba yin, kuro ni waji o mi. Verse 40, and I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you, and a perpetual shame, which shall not be forgotten. Ese o goji, emi o si mo, e gan, a ene kwa ekon wa sori yin, ati iti ju lai lai, you see, for the people that behave like uh, Cain, that do not pray, that do not seek the face of the Lord, that do not even utter a word of repentance, saying, Oh Lord, I'm sorry. Those people, God said, He will forget them, He will reject them forever. So, what I want to be kind. 
awon to je pe won o tile ni soro gbolo irun ku ada kan kan ti won o ni bi kita on kan kan olorun so wi pe iru egbe awoyan be ohun o gbagbe won ohun o si ko won titi lai lai but if you do like david and you come before the lord and you are pleading with god not to cast you away from his presence there is mercy for such a backslider. So, but you are going to be that for the two quarters. What you are doing? So, you come and tell them no clue. What you are doing? Lie, lie. You rule any bear. So, you are going to die. It's in Bethlehem. In Psalm fifty-one, verse eleven. You know, in that video, you are going to be like that. That's a cocker lie. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Masu sa mi ti kro ni waju re ki o masu se gba e mi mi ma re lo wo mi. But you see, in the case of Cain, he just went away from the presence of God. He said, "Well, punishment is there. I'm a fugitive. I'm a vagabond. There is no remedy. I'm living." And he left. Oh man, o ka kro ni waju lo wa pe lo pe lo inyagan. Pe a mo mo pe a se ti wa ni be iji ya si ti wa ni be mo ti di san san ti alani kiri ni tori na unko ni bi kita. Let's go back to Genesis chapter four verse sixteen. Eje ke akwa das Genesis yori keni a se keni di logun. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. Cain ni si ya de lo kro ni waju luwa o si joko ni ile nodi. Ni iha ila orun Edeni. The land which Cain went after he left the presence of the Lord. The name of the place is Nod. He let it Cain in law. Let him get you off what you lose. What's it? I can't recall it. None. Nodi. Those who have studied the original language and they also study this kind of name, they say that it was a land of trembling. And what you want to get or not? But go long to alone. You better quit before they get gone. Ti won si wo si awari re dada won sa ki esi pe ile o je ibi ile iwari ri He was trembling under the wrath of God and it was a land of trembling for him O nwari ri ni waju Oluwa o si je ile iwari ri fun Some other people say it was a land of exile the land of flight he had fled away from the presence of God never to see the presence of God again Awon lo mi ran pe ni ile awon isansa Nibi ti o jaype o sa o si kuro ko si pada si wadjo luwa ma. Other people say it's the land of insecurity, the land of uncertainty, never knowing what will happen to him tomorrow. And well, lo mira kwe ni ile ti o si dani lo ju o ju o wadju ni be. E ni to jaype ibi to wako ni dani lo ju o la komanti o se le si o hon. Have you ever discovered anyone that leaves the presence of God and refuses to repent? It's been coming to the church before, reading the Bible before, praying before, but now it's gone away with sin, with guilt, with condemnation, and it's not even willing to repent. They go to the land of Nod. Oh, am I ne kato jape otimo lu watele sogba wati fio lu wasile koni fe lati kabi beli ma koni fe lati wa josi fe lu amo lo roma kosi ni fe lati badura ma iru eni be to sakro ni wa jolu wa oma lebi to lo ile no di ni. They go to the land of trembling and the land of flight and the land of exile. What is salo si ile no di ile ile wariri ile jaya ile ti osi ojo e wa ju fun wa. They go to the land of insecurity and the land of uncertainty. What is lo si ile ti ko sabu ati ile ti osi dani lo ju. It is only in Christ you have certainty and security. Ne no Christian ne kaso so lo ti le ni dani lo ju ati a then let's look at it now from verse 17. And Cain knew his wife. Let us stop there for a moment. And you see there are people who don't study the Bible. And when they hear Cain knew his wife. The question they ask is where did Cain get wife to marry? But look at Genesis chapter 5 verse 4. And the days of Adam after he had begotten said were 800 years and he begat sons and daughters ojo adamu leyin ti o bi se ti je egberin odun o si bi omokunrin ati omabirin you see adam and eve also had daughters the reason we don't have all their names is that god is not interested in giving all the names of the people that have lived in the world from the beginning of the world all that he gives us is the one that relates to teaching us a lesson 
of how we can know him and make the acceptable sacrifice. Oma, Adam atiefa, one ni awo ma birin, sugba idi ti a ko fi siri akosile gbogbo awon eniyan wa yi ni pe inu Olorun ki se ile pa re lati ko gbogbo oruko awon eti o fi aye gba lati ko sile ni awon eto je pe a le ri ekoko ninu won. Now in verse 17, Ke knew his wife and she conceived and bear Enoch and he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Ni ese keta di logo ti akatele ka ni si ma yare o si loyun o si bi inoku o si te ilu kan do o si so oruko ilu na ni inoku bi oruko omo re okunrin Have you seen how people do that today they build a city they call it by their name they build a, a street they call it by their name even church they will call church by their own name have you seen that o wa ti ri ele to nsele lodi eni bi to je pe awon eniyan won a ko didi ilu won a so loruko won won a ko opopo ona kan won a so ni oruko won o to ti e to ya ni lenu ni pe i oruko ijo ijo sosi won a to so loruko won now can building a city and calling it after his son's name shows us the concern of the wicked Ever more wanted to magnify themselves than to glorify God. Niti pe ka ni ko ilu kan o si so ni oruko ma re okunrin ari ife awon eniyan buburu won ma nfe lati ma gbe ara won gaju ki won ki o se ogo Olorun lo. They want more to seek after a name on earth than a life in heaven. Won ma nfe lati loruko lori ile aye ju ki won ki o ni iye Olorun lo. More to establish their seed in towns and towers than having God's favor upon them. Won ma nfe lati fe se iru omo won mule pelu awon ilu ati awon ile soju ati ni oju rere Olorun lo. Let's now see some of the achievements and the accomplishments of the descendants of Cain. E wa je ki awo awon aseyo ri tabi awon nkan ti awon iru omo Cain igbe se. Verse 18 and unto Enoch was born Erad and Erad begat Mehujael and Mehujael begat Methusael and Mehusael begat Lemek. Ni ese ekeji de logon, fun enoku le asi bi, iradi, iradi si bi, mehujaili, mehujaili si bi, metusaili, metusaili si bi, lameki. Verse 20, and Ada bear Jebel, and he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. Ni ese ogon, Ada si bi, jabali, oni baba irua watingbe ago, ti wansi ni era osi. Verse 21, and his brother's name was Jubal. And he was the father of all such as Andu the harp and organ. Ese koko li logun oru kwara kunre re ni jubali. Oni baba iru gogbo a wantin lo duru ati fere. Verse 22 and Zila, she also bear jubal cane. At jubal cane, and an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of jubal cane was Nehema. Ni ese keji li logun ati sila on kwe lobi jubal kaini. O luko ni gogo olona ide ati rin, arabi rin tu balkai ni ni nama. In spite of all these earthly accomplishments that the people had, let us remember there is no time that we read that they built an altar for God, or they worshipped God, or they prayed unto God, or they thought of where they were going to spend eternity. Lori gogo a se yori iti arati a we ni wa yi, ti wan se tabi, ti wan so kwe wan gbe se yi, ti a ba wu dara dara ori kwe ko si a koko kan, ti a so yi kwe wan ran ti olorun, tabi ti wan kwe kwe fun olorun, tabi ti wan ronu kwe ni bo ni a wo ti lo a yira ye wan. They were the children or the descendants of Cain, a God forsaken man. Wan je iru o ma kai ni, eni ti olorun ti kon si le. You see that is the disadvantage of people that are born to a cause or a God forsaken man. The forsaken father or mother will not uh, teach their children the way of the Lord, to know the Lord, to know how to pray. O wari pe, o le ni o je, o un kati o buru ju ne pa, o wato je pe, abi wan si di le baba, tabi ya ti olorun ti konsile, ti wan koma olorun, baba, tabi ya ti olorun konsile, tabi ti wan oma olorun yi, wan o ni, mabi wan o se kwa, wan oma wan ni on olorun, ati bi ati igba lura. All they will know how to teach them is how to do material things, mechanical things, and building, and all the things of the world. O un kati wan yi, kan si a se ye geni no re la te kwa wwa ma wani kwe bi a ti nin kan tara bi a se nkon kan tara a ti nkan ti a ye yi your own children do you teach them to pray 
Do you teach them to worship? Do you teach them to study the word of God? Do you teach them to know God? Or is it only material things, education and trade and profession that you are teaching them? And one material ko unjo ko wa bi asen ko ba asen badura bi asen kabi beli bi asen josi bi asen fero loro tabi nka to nko wa na ni pe bi asen kawe bi asen ni nka ta ye ti asen start asen ra. Let us look at one of the descendants of Cain. E je ki agbe kan ye wo ni nu awon iru omo Kaini. His name is Lamech. Oruko re na ni Lamechi. In verse 19. Ni ase e ko kan di logun. And Lamech took unto him two wives. Lamech is ife obirin meji. The name of the one was Ada and the name of the other Zila. Oruko e kini ni Ada ati oruko e keji ni Zila. The first polygamist in the world was a descendant of Cain. Akobirin ajo akoko ninu aye yi o na ni ru omo Kaini. Many people that are polygamists today they don't know that they are making themselves the descendants of Cain. And what you want to say, I can't do it. I want to say, 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 the polygamist is a descendant of the vagabond and the fugitive. I want to say, 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 Cain was the first murderer that killed his brother Abel. And the polygamists are the descendants of Cain, the first murderer in the world. Cain ni ni akpa ni akoko, eni ti okpa ara konrere. Ni tori na abogwa wa kaya jo, akobirin jo, wadje iru oma akpa ni akoko ni nwa ye yi. Cain was the one that received a mark, a mark, the mark of a criminal. The mark of the cursed person that there was no forgiveness for him, there was no mercy for him. He did not even want forgiveness and mercy, and he left the presence of God never to return. All the polygamies are the descendants of Cain, who had the mark of a criminal upon him. Cain ni ni akokona ti ogba ami odaran eni ti afi e didi di pe ki yo si ato se fun on kwa kwa ti e bikita la te wa ato se rara ni tori na go gwa wa kaya jo akobere jo lo di oni wa je iru oma kai ni eni odana kokoti ogba mi and if you don't want to be in the direction in the lineage or descendants of Cain you will never go near polygamy in your life ni tori na ti o ba fe ki aso itan ran re ka so jo ti kai ni tabi ko ni se nkan ka pelu kai ni o to nla ti se ni pe lai o ni fowo kan ka mo kobirin jo look at verse 23 we se keta le logun and lemex said unto his wives ada and zila hear my voice ye wives of lemex hearken unto my speech for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. La me kisi we fun a wan ya repe ada o un sila e gbo un mi e nya ya la me ki e peti si oro mi ni tori mo kpa o konre kan si e don mi ati o don ma konre kan si i palara mi. Now here we learn of what also became of the polygamist. He was a polygamist and he was a murderer. Ni la to wari e kaka koni pa anwa kobi ni jo. Onta ari koni pa re ni pe la me ki je akaya jo. Baka na oto ji akpa ni yon. Obviously as a polygamist he didn't have peace in his own house. Didn't have peace in his own heart. Didn't have peace with anybody. You show me a polygamist. I'll show you somebody that doesn't have peace. Ti ni ti awa ti rusa ki e si ni nwa ye re ni pe koni alafi a ni nwa no le re. Koni alafi a ni nwa kan re. Koni alafi a kwe lua anwe e ni yon. Ni a du go re. Ni tori na iwa wafi a anwa kobi ni kan johan mi. E mi o wafi e ni ti o la lafi a hon. And so he became also a murderer. Baka na oto di akwa ni yon. And he himself confessed in verse 24. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold. Truly, le mek seven ti an seven fold. On fun la la re, wa we je wo re ni ese e keni li logun. Bi a o gbe san, ka eni le ni meje nje, ti la meki ni igba a don ni meje. Don't you know that these false polygamists knew that the judgment of God was coming? He didn't even, he said, I know, I know, judgment will come. O jo jama kwe, o konri, to jek po niya niya, kokoto kwa ya jo. O jama kwe, o mo yi kwe, i da jo lor rumbo, o ti e so gbang ba kwe mo mo, kwe da jo lor rumbo. The same thing, let us understand, that those who are polygamists today, marry wife upon wife upon wife upon wife you are marrying judgment o wa ye ko ye wa gba gba lodi oni wi pe gbogbo awon to je pe ka ma fire ka ma fire ka ma kobirin jo ni idajo nbo 
Now let's go to point two generations and likeness of Adam. Generations and likeness of Adam. This is very important for us to understand and to study. In Genesis chapter 4 verses 25 and 26. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bare a son. And called his name Seth. For God says she has appointed me another seed instead of Abel. Whom Cain slew. Adam was it on my yare. O si bi o konre kan, o si pi oru konre ni seti, o wikwe, ni tori o luwa, o loron yan, iru o o ma mi ran pomi, ni po abeli ti kai ne kwa. And to say to him also, there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Ati seti, o nkwe lu, li abi o ma konre kan fun, o si pi oru konre ni enosi. Chapter 5 from verse 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Atiako, atiaboli, odawa, osi surifuwa, osi kweoruko wani, Adamu, liojoti Adamu. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years, and he begat a son in his own likeness, and after his image, and called his name Seth. Adam osi wali, adoji odu, osi biyoma konreka, niji jo, atilia unarare. You will see very clearly the connection between verses 25 and 26 of chapter 4 and verses 1 to 3 of chapter 5. Wa wari ase kwa to wa ti matima la ri ese karun de ni ogma ati ikeni de logma ori keni ati ori karun ese ikeni si iketa. Now what we have read in verses 1 and 2. We know that we knew that from our past studies. Let us look at it again from chapter 5, verse 1. This is a book of the generations of Adam. That means what God is telling us now in this chapter, chapter 5 is going to relate to the history and to the development from generation to generation starting from Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. That is when Adam was created, the holiness nature of God was created with him. Look at verse 2. And I have something very important in verse 2. Male and female created he them. And blessed them. And called their name Adam. He called the name of both of them, husband and wife. He called husband and wife by one name, Adam. That is why we will say when a man has married a woman, we'll say Mr. and Mrs. In this case, Mr. and Mrs. Adam. Now that means that when you are married, you have done all the proper things, dowry has been paid, everything has been settled, you are now a family, you are now a couple. The wife should not 
still be bearing her own parents name you will bear the name of the husband you see here god called adam and eve he called them the same name adam now we also learned that Adam and Eve lost the image of God when they fell when they sinned. After they lost the image and the likeness of God, they now had their own corrupt nature. And in this Genesis chapter 5 verse 3, it says, Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image. Now that means then Seth was born with the nature of corruption and he was a child of wrath born in sin. This is what we should learn from the word of God that from that time Everyone that is born into this world is born with a nature of corruption and depravity. Let's look at Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Telling us what happens to every person now that is born into this world. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin so death passed upon all men for that all have seen. Nitori gaga bias at it pa or dwene can wa ye at ye kuni pa se beni kusi koja so li ni ya bogbo lati or dwene ti bo bweni ati dese in Psalm fifty one verse five. Ninori dafi di only kokan li la dota esse karun. Behold I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Ki ye si, ni nwe ase de de li akbe bi mi, ati ni nwe ase ni ya mi si lo yun mi. You can see it very clearly. Every child that comes into this world comes with a nature of sin, a nature of corruption. O wa le ri bang baba yi pe, go gwa manti a babi si nwa ye yi, e da ton gwe ba wa si nwa ye je, e da to di ba je, e da ti o ti ba je, pata pata. That is why when you see a child that is born, before this child knows how to talk, the child knows how to get angry without anybody telling the child how to be angry. Wa wa yi dini ti wa viri pe, o manti o je kwe a bi si nwa ye, Without anybody teaching this child how to steal, the child knows how to steal. When this child is sucking milk from the mother, if this child is hungry, the child will bite the mother, and nobody has taught that child how to be wicked. There are times to find this child to be so angry and will be kicking, will throw away the feeding bottle, and nobody has taught this child to throw away feeding bottle. Sometimes the anger will just develop into terrible crying and screaming and will not allow anybody to even touch the child will push everybody away Now 
pe ko ni faye gbe ni kan ni lati e ti fowo kan yo ma tapa si gbogbo won that is the manifestation of the adamic nature the nature of corruption the nature of depravity with which everyone is born into the world eleyi ni farahan eda adamu eda idibaje eda ti o ti dibaje patapata ti abi ti gbogbo eyan mu yi wa sinu aye yi in psalm 14 verses 2 and 3 ninu orin david orin ikerin la ese ikeje ati iketa the lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand us and see God. Oluwa bojuwo lati orun wa sara awon mi niyan lati wo bi enikan wa ti oyeye ti o sin wa olorun. They are all gone aside, they are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Gogo won li o si jumo ya si apakan, won si di eleeri patapata from the words of Jesus Christ in John chapter 3 verse 6. John chapter 3 and verse 6. It said, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. What that means is that the works of the flesh will be manifest with anyone that is born of the flesh. By sin, Adam lost the image of God, and he himself became corrupt in his nature. Nipa ese Adam ukwada no a wonon loron osi dieni iba idiba je. And a fallen parent could only beget a fallen child. Seth was begotten in the likeness of a sinful father. Since Noah was a direct descendant of Seth, and is the father of us all, and since he was able to transmit to us only that which he had received from self. So we have the doctrine and the reality of universal depravity. Let me explain to you what I've just read to you from the outline. Adam lost the image of God. Adam lost the image of God. Adam and he now he had says in the corruption and in the sinfulness of his own nature. And then eventually from generation to generation Noah came out of Seth. Now you know that when the flood came, everybody was wiped away except Noah and his own children. Remember everyone coming from Adam and Seth and Noah all down through the line to us today. Everyone now has had passed to us from birth that universal depravity and corruption. So all of us have been begotten in the image and likeness of a corrupt sinful father. Human depravity is that corruption of our nature. Whereby we are inclined to sin rather than holiness. The seat of this depravity is within. External forms of wickedness in words and actions are only expressions of that which is within. This 
depravity is universal. It exists in all ages, in all countries, in all communities, in all families, in all individuals. It is inherent in our nature as a result of the fall of Adam. What is the solution today? God sent Jesus Christ so that, first of all, all the branches of the tree of sin in our lives, all those branches will be cleared up and cut off, our sins will be forgiven, will be saved. And then after that, we can be sanctified, we can be purified, the Adamic nature can be dealt with and taken away. We get saved as we turn away from sin and we pray to the Lord and call upon the Lord Jesus Christ who died to save us. Amen, dear Nigbala. Nigbati abadje uwe sewa, ti ase kwe sewa sile. Ti awa kwe Jesu Christi olu wala, eni ti okufu wala ti gba wala. We get sanctified when we consecrate ourselves to the Lord. We desire it and we pray, believing that the blood of Jesus Christ was shed to deal with that Adamic nature in us. Amen, so wa di mi ma, nigbati abadje uwe fun, ti agba dura, ti afara wa jita yonda fun, ti ase gba gbo yikwe, now we're going to go to point three. Death universal for Adam's descendants. Let's now look at Genesis chapter five. Let's look at I'll I'll not be able to read all the verses to you because of time. When you go home, you can read all the verses yourself. But look at verse 5. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Adam was Verse 8, and all the days of said were 912 years, and he died. Verse 11, and all the days of Enos were 905 years, and he died. Verse 14. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years, and he died. Verse 17. And all the days of Mahalaleel were 895 years, and he died. Verse 20. And all the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died. Verse 27. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. Verse 31. And all the days of Lamech were 777 years, and he died. Verse 33. The striking thing in this chapter which I've read to you is the painful repetition of the words, and he died. We read that they lived hundreds of years, many, many years, but even though those years were long, eventually we have the reaching word of God and he died. Verse 
we only we also learn another thing. Oh, me not yet only call one be. In this single chapter, we have the life history of ten uh, patriarchs reaching in one single chapter. Nino ori kan so so ari ekoko wi pe awon eniyan iran bi o eyan mewa ari akosile won ninu ori kan so so yi now there wasn't much to, re- to write about them that shows you god's estimate of man and god's estimate of the importance of man ah ori on pupo lati ko nipa won sugbon ele lo nbi han wa bi eyan se ri to se se ye bi ye ni waju oluwa si now men will write about themselves they will write many volumes 7 10 16 volumes big books about themselves writing about when they were young when they married names of their children a lot of things when god writes about man writes a few sentences and then after he died nigba ti awon eniyan ba fe ko akosile nipa etan igbe aye won opolopo iwe ni wa yo ko iwe nla kabiti kabiti ni won o kan nipa igbe aye won sugba nigba ti olorun fe kan kan nipa awon eyan won yi o kan so nkan die nipa won o si pari won ku so that means that many people that are so proud looking at themselves that this is what they did all those things do not have any value in the light of eternity iya ni wi pe opolopo awon eyan ti won ma nkan ti an so nkan nipa ara won ti won gbe ara won ga ti won so opolopo ni nkan nipa ara won eleo ni nkan kan se ti a ba foju aye raye wo the major thing we learn in this chapter is the record of man's mortality that mortality or death is inevitable. Oh, kati owa se pata ki ti akoni pa anwe niya ye, ti o si gba ke si waga oni pe iku o ti digbe se fwe niya. It is written of each one, and he died. Oh, ti akoni pa oluku luku wani pe o si ku. No money can bribe death, no power can avert his blow. Ko si o wo ti o le tu iku lo ju, ko si si akbara to le ye iku kure. One event that we know is recorded for all, no matter the situation in life, whether a prince or a beggar, is that he died. A consulate and when you tell the theory, the as a consulate, you say ye be ye. But ya Allah la ni omala de ni otabita laka ona ni ipe osiku. What happened to these patriots? Happens also to all men without exception. On tio se le si a wan baba la wan ye, lio si se le si bogbo e ni a la e yue ni kakansi le. All finish with death. Bogbo wan pari re si pe wan ku. The question is, how am I preparing to receive that death which every day advances towards me? And from which no power in the world can shield me. Ibere to wa ye ki abere ni pe ba wo ni mo se ngbara di sile la ti te wok ba eku. Bi o ti jekpe o jojo malon suma mi. E iti o si jekpe ko si akbara kakani no a ye to le da bobo mi. Let's look at some scriptures telling us of the certainty of death. E jekpe a wo a wan iwe mi ma di e to soni pa i dani lo jupe iku di oran yan. In Psalm 89 verse 48. Ni nu orin da fi di orin i kokan di la adoron e se i keji di la adota. Psalm 89 verse 48. Orin i keji kokan di la adoron. What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Sila. Okunri wo liyo wa la ye, ti ki yo ri ku, ti yo gbo kan re lo wo isa uku. Now, Sila there means stop a minute and think about it. Bolo nti akwe ni Sila ni nwe de ge si, oso akwe da wadro ni ki o si ronu ni pare. Think about the fact that eventually death will come to everyone. Ko ro ni pare da da ikwe ni go se o iku o di oran ya yo waba o ni kaluku. And remember we have only 70 to 80 or 90 years to spend. Some people are living as if they have 700 years. Even if they are 700 years, eventually death will come. Rati wipe adorni, tabi ogorni, tabi adorni odun, la nifun wa lati lo ni nwa yesu gbe anwa miran. Wa ma ngwe gbe aye wa bi enkwe ogorni meji odun lo mbefun wa lati lo. Boti eji odun ogorni meji odun, iku yo wa ni bo she. In Psalm 49 verse 10. Ni nu orin da fi di, orin iko kandi la adota ese eke wa. Psalm 49 verse 10. Orin iko kandi la adota ese eke wa. For he sees that wise men die. Likewise the foolish and the brutish perish, uh, person perish and leave their wealth to others. Nitori only pe awon logbanku be le asiwere ati eran ko nsegbe 
wan si nfi oro wan si le fwe lo miran. In verse 14. Ni e se e la. Like sheep they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. And the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. Bi agontan li ante wan si isa oku. Iku yo je on lara wan. E ni di dro sin sin yo joba wan li o wuro. E wa wan yo re kuro. Isa oku si ni bugbe wan. Whatever talent, whatever gift, whatever riches, whatever prosperity. It says their beauty shall consume in the grave. On konto uko je talenti. Tabi e bon, tabi onro. Tabi on konto uka nini nwa ye. Osa wikwe e wa wan yo re. Isa oku ni bugbe wan. There are some ladies, there are some women that refuse to yield to the gospel. And because I am beautiful. I want to use my talent. I want to use my beauty. Their beauty shall consume in the grave. I want my beri mira wa. I want my beri mira wa. To jay wikwe wa ma. He said, Death shall feed on them. Why don't you give your life to the Lord? Don't you know it's appointed unto men once to die? And after this, the judgment. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Judgment is coming after death. And are you prepared for the judgment of God? Have you been born again? Are you living a life that is to the glory of God? Death fixes all forever. This is our time of preparation. Our chances of preparation last while life lasts. This time we are living is the time we can repent. It's the time we can pray. It's the time we can come into fellowship with God. It's Immediately death shuts the gates of life upon us. It ushers us into the unchangeable hereafter. Ni gareti kubati le kwen yi ma wani yi yoti wa lo si biti koti ni si atun se ma. When somebody dies, that is the end. Ni gbati ene bati kupa okpari na ni yo. What I mean is that he cannot repent after death. Where death meets you, that will determine your eternity. On ti mo nsa ni wikwe, ni gbati enya ba kuba eko ni si aye ro nupu adafu yi ruwe ni be ma, ni obiti kuba ka oma o ni yopwe no aye ra yire. There was a man that didn't know God, his name is Walter. En ni kan wato, jek kwe ko ma loron oru kore ni fortia. At the point of death, Walter said to his doctor, I am abandoned by God and man. Nigbati okunrin to doju iku tan o wa so fun dokita re pe Olorun ati eniyan ti komi sile. He said I will give you half of what I am worth if you will give me 6 months to live. O wa so fun dokita re pe won fi abo gbogbo nti mo ba to tabi ti mo ni fun o to ba le fun mi ni osun mefa si lati lo laye. The doctor replied and said sir you cannot live 6 weeks. Dokita yi wa da lohun o so wi pe ogbe then this man Volta dying said, I shall go to hell. Nigbati okunrin Volta yi to wa nku lo oni ngo lo sorun apadi. With that word in his mouth, very little at some moment after he died. Pelu gbolo yin lenu re legere ti o soro itan oku. If you are not prepared for eternity, where will you spend eternity? Ti o ba mura sile fun aye raye ni bolo ti fe lu aye raye. How different are the anticipations of the saved? Ba wa ni oro tabi re ti awon eniyan mi ma si yato ni ti won. The man he was saved his name Richard Baxter. He said while he was dying, I have pains but I have peace. Or konrekan wa to je pe o gbo Olorun gbo ti an poruko re ni Richard Baxter. 
Nigba to wa nku lo oni ni to to mo ni ile mo ni ro ra ninu ara sugbon mo ni alaafia When he was about to die although he was sick and he was having pain in the body he said I have peace in the soul he knew that that day was going to meet the prince of peace O ma bi o ti le je wi pe o nku lo ni akoko na ti o si ni ro ra ninu ara re o wa so wi pe mo ni alaafia ninu okan mi tori po mo pe ojo na un yo si alabapade oba aladi alaafia John Wesley that preacher of holiness and sanctification when he was about to die, his shout of victory in the last hour was this, the best of all is, God is with us. John Wesley to je o ni wa so do do ni, ni gba to fe ku, i gbe to gbe no re kanta, bi o roi kenye re, o ni pe, o so wi pe, yi ti o dara ju ni no gbo gbo yi wa yi lo ni pe, o lo ron wa kwe lu wa. Another man, Dr. Payson, when he was about to die, he said, the victory is won forever. Okunri miran ti a ni Dr. Pesi ni gba ti ona nku lo ohun ti o so ni pe mo ti gba isegun na ti ti aye He said I'm going to bask in an ocean of purity and benevolence and happiness to all eternity O si so gba ngba pe won o we ninu okun iwa mi mo ati ibu ore re ati inu ayo ti ti aye ai ni pekun In Numbers chapter 23 verse 10 Ninu numeri ori iketa le logun ese ikewa Numbers chapter 23 the latter part of verse 10. No Mary, ori iketa le logon ila tokbe nye se ikewa. Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his. Ya ki e mi ki o ku iku o lo do do ki igbe nye mi ki o si da bi iti re. If you are going to die the death of the righteous, you have to be righteous right now. To ba fe ku ku o lo do do, ni gba to si wa la ye ne kaso solo le, be igbe a yi o do do. You have to be born again. O la ti di atan bi. I mean living a life that is to the glory of God. Ki o si ma be igbe a ye ti yo ma fo go lor on han. If you want to die the death of the righteous, you will need to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. Ti o ba fe ku ku o lo do do, ni wang ba to and you will need to live a holy life because without holiness no man shall see the Lord let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer you, you have seen all that we have studied today be like Cain who went out of the presence of God a condemned cursed criminal. Ma se da bi kai ni, eni ti o fi wadjo lu wa si le, ge ge bi akpa ni ya, eni ti a ti fi ge gun. Don't be like Cain who did not have a single word of repentance, but he just went out before the Lord silent and cursed. Ma se da bi kai ni, eni ti o kro ni wadjo loron, ti ko ti e ni go lo iro no kwa da kan kan so, go kro ni wadjo loron, kwe lu i da ke ge ge ti o si de ni go. Call upon the Lord today and make sure that your sins are forgiven. Ke ke o lu wa lo ni, ke o si li da ju kwe a ti da you can be born again. You can forgive your sin. You can change your life. If you have been born again, you can be sanctified. And you can deal with that Adamic nature in you. And then it can prepare you and make you righteous until the day of death. Death will definitely come. When death comes, where will you be? Where will you spend eternity? Settle it with the Lord today.